So here we are, Algebra 2. This is Algebra 2, Benchmark 1, Review. Algebra 2, Review. So there's a lot of questions here. And these questions are actually not going to be short answer the way that you see them here when you take your test. But they will be very similar in their topic. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. We're going to try and highlight like what kind of topic are we really talking about. And then also go into the idea of, okay, so how do I actually work through that? So the first one, if I were to look here at number one, it says simplify the expression, assume on all variables are non-zero, and we got some exponents, exponents here, there, and there. So when we work out through those exponents here, uh, we're just following exponent rules, so rules for exponents. Exponents rules. And let's see what we have going on. So the first one I see squared here, and there's this negative 4a. So that's really negative 4a times negative 4a. And then the other one is a squared b to the fifth. So I would have five of that group. So I'm going to look at a couple shortcuts here. First, when I have it squared, that means I have it to the second power. So this negative 4 times negative 4 becomes 16. And then the a times a becomes a squared for that first part, just for this. Now for the second piece, we're going to the fifth power. So I'm going to do each of those individually. That would be like negative a to the fifth power. And then the other one would be b to the fifth power. Okay, so thinking about how would that simplify a little bit further. Well, this is really negative 1. And if I have 5 negative 1s being multiplied, that's negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. And that all together makes a negative. So that's going to be negative there. And then a to the fifth. So I'm going to wind up having this negative a to the fifth. For this part, b to the fifth, though, that's just b to the fifth. And then we got the 16a squared. And it turns out that the a squared and the a to the fifth can combine. Because that's like a times a times a times a times a times a times a and we really have seven of those so that's going to become at the end here we got a negative I'll move that out front 16 is our constant or coefficient you could call it a to the seventh and b to the fifth cha-ching there we go that's it that's done all right, let's look at the next one. It says write the expression in expanded form. This is pretty much the same idea, but when it says expanded form, that just means expanded like this. What does to the fourth power mean? It means four times multiplied. So I'm going to have 5xy times 5xy times 5xy times 5xy times, man, I feel like this is repetitive here. Um, well, okay, so that's what's happening with that one. Um, let's see, so we got one done, two done, both talking about exponents and the rules of exponents. Now we're getting into some radicals. All right, estimate square root of 33 to the nearest tenth. So if I wanted to estimate, that just means that I got to get close. And what I'm looking to do then is I don't really need to get right to it. I just need to get close to it. So let's talk about square root of 33. Well, how do, do I know something close to that? Well, I know 36. That's a perfect square. And square root of 36 equals 6. But that's going to be too big. So that means that this should be less than 6. And then if I think about, well, what's right below that? What's the perfect square right below that? It happens to be 25. And the square root of 25 equals 5. So it's somewhere in the middle here between 5 and 6. Because it's bigger than this side, but smaller than that side. Well, let's just take a couple of guesses here. How about right in the middle, like 5.5? Well, 5.5 squared, if that gives me about 33, then I'd be right on. So let's do that. 5.5 times 5.5. I'd have 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27. And then we got 5 times 55 again, so that's another 275. Let's see what we'd get when we add all this up. We got a 5, 7 and 5 make 2, carry the 1, 
I got a 0 and then a 3. So that gives me 30.25. So I'm guessing maybe actually a little bit more. Maybe closer to like 5.7. So if I were to multiply this, let's see what I get. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 5 is 35 plus 4 is 39. And then I got 5 times 57 here. So we got 5 times 7 is 35, carry that 3, 5 times 5 plus 3 is 25, plus 3 is 28, and let's see what we're going to get. So I'm going to have 9, 9 plus 5 is 14, and 4 plus 8 is 12. You know, that's pretty close. I'm willing to bet that it's either 5.7 or 5.8, and it's got to be right around one of those. So it says estimate, and we just did. That was pretty easy there. All right, let's look at this next one. This one is a little weird, but not as weird as you would think. It's just, it's not super obvious. So let's start breaking some stuff down here. I notice a couple of things. First of all, I see that these three digits on the bottom, those, if I were to add them up, are a multiple of three, which tells me, you know, why am I even do that? That tells me that three goes into 192. And you might be asking me, well, like, why do you care about that? You're about to find out here. Um, so let's see. 3 goes into 192. How many times? We got 6 here. That'll be 18. Carry the 1. And then we got 64. So this right here, in reality, would be 25 times 3 on top. And what would be on bottom there? It looks like 64 times 3. Why does this even help me? Well, here's what I see. 3 over 3 is just 1, so it's really 25 over 64 being square rooted. But I can split that up into separate square roots. It'd be square root of 25 over square root of 64. And square root of 25, well, that's 5. That's a piece of cake. Square root of 64, that's 8. So 5 over 8, this one actually simplified very easily. Way easier than I was thinking. I didn't expect it to come out so simple, but sometimes it does. All right, let's look at the next one here, and we'll wrap up this first video. We're just going to keep it pretty short. So simplify. Actually, we'll do two more. We'll do two more. So we got to simplify this crazy thing by something called rationalizing the denominator. What that really means is we're going to get the denominator so that it becomes a perfect square. So right now, it's just square root of 7 and square root of 13. And if we want to turn that into a perfect square down the bottom, then we got to give it a partner that's the same. So we got square root of 13, square root of 13. But I can't just multiply by square root of 13. I got to multiply by 1. 13 over 13 is 1. Square root of 13 over square root of 13 is 1. Anything over itself is 1. So this makes it, you know, a little bit easier for me. Then I'll have square root of 7 times square root of 13 over square root of 169. And the square root of 169 is 13. 13 times 13, square rooted is 13. So on the bottom now, I will have 13. On top, though, I actually do have to multiply this out. 7 times 13. Well, let's see, that's 70 and 21. That's going to be 91, but square rooted. And that's it. That, that's that answer. That easy. All right, let's look at this last one here. We got three, we got four, we got five. Let's look at six. So six says add. Well, when we're adding or subtracting with square roots, what you're really looking at is, are they like terms? Because if I had like 3x plus 4x minus 5y, we can't do anything with this y because it's not the same as the other people. It's like a different clan. So what I'm looking at here is I got 18 square root 2 plus 2 square root 2. And these square root 2's are like, a, they make them like terms. So another way of thinking of it is I could even factor that out and add these up. But it, well, what's happening here, this is what's happening. So if we pull out the square root of 2, then we got 18 plus 2, and that's going to give me square root of 2 times 20. Or more normal way to write that would be 20 times square root of 2. And that's just typical standard notation. Um, but you could look at it like you're just combining the coefficients there. 
All right, so that's video one. There's more coming your way, but that's what we got for now.